I'm really glad to welcome you all to the fourth presentation in our FCL Global Overture series. My name is Matthew Schonsberg. I'm Associate Director here at the Zurich Hub. Uh, by way of housekeeping, please do keep your microphones muted until you intend to speak, and then please unmute and turn on your video. Meanwhile, please feel free to post questions to the chat at any time throughout the presentation. Our presentation today will be given by the two principal investigators of the FCL Global Research Module, Dense and Green Cities, Emerging Models of Integrated Urban Development. Professor Sasha Mentz is the Director of Future Cities Laboratory Global, the Zurich Hub, has been a full professor for architecture and building process at ETH Zurich since 2004, and is a founding member of the Institute of Technology and Architecture at ETH Zurich. From 2011 to 15, he was Dean and Vice Dean at the Department of Architecture at ETH. Uh, since 2010, he's involved in the Future Cities Lab in Singapore and is co-principal investigator of Denson Green Building Typologies Research Project at FCL since 2015. He's a member of various industry boards and commissions, including the Reviewing Board for Clusters of Excellence at the German Research Foundation since 2017, and the Strategy Commission of ETH Zurich since 2018. From 2005 until 11, he was president of the Swiss Engineers and Architects Association in Zurich. From 2016 to 19, was member of the Board of Directors of SIA Switzerland, and is a member of the Federation of Swiss Architects since 2004. In 1991, he founded Jaran Sport Co. for the production and construction of bicycles in Zurich and Taiwan. In 1997, he co-founded together with the architectural firm Sam Architects and Partners, where he's principal architect. Professor Dr. Thomas Stropfer is full professor and founding associate head of Pillar of Architecture and Sustainable Design at the Singapore University of Technology and Design. He obtained his doctoral and master's degrees with distinction at Harvard University, where he was appointed assistant professor of architecture in 2004 and associate professor of architecture in 2008. Since 2015, he's been member of the core research team and steering committee of the Singapore ETH Center's Future Cities Laboratory. He has published and exhibited extensively, including with Professor Mentz, a new book about the research theme presented today, addressing the district scale of Dense and Green, for which the contract was recently signed. Continuing the series of two books, for those of you who haven't seen it already, Dense and Green Cities in 2020, to which Professor Mentz was also a contributing author, and Dense and Green Innovative Building Types for Sustainable Urban Architecture in 2016. And as a series Did editor, four, four, Springer Briefs in Architectural Design and Technologies, published by Springer Nature in, since 2014. He's the recipient of many awards, including the Chicago Athenaeum, the European Center International Architecture Award, the German Design Award, the Asia Education Leadership Award, and the President's Design Award, the highest honor accorded to designers across all disciplines in Singapore. Sasha, Thomas, welcome. Thank you for joining us. The floor is yours. Thank you, Matthew, for these uh, very kind words and this uh, very clear introduction. Sometimes one forgets what one has done in the past. <laughs> so even the bicycles you mentioned, thank you. So maybe I say hello to everybody and uh, it's a great honor for Thomas and myself to be here and to introduce Dance in Green Cities, where we are now working on intensively. Maybe we can see the next slide. I don't know who is uh, in charge of changing the slides here. <laughs> Somebody should. Thank you. And um, we can see immediately the topic. The topic is Singapore, as you can see on the left, and the topic is Zurich. Uh, on the right. And what we try to do is to learn from each other according to a city development. And uh, both cities are very active in developing. And if I can talk about Zurich, Thomas will do more uh, about uh, Singapore. Is Zurich will increase nearly 20% of its inhabitants in the next 20 15 to 20 years. And that's a lot. We in Switzerland, we are not so much used to um, <clears throat> overcome all these increases because Switzerland is growing, is growing slowly, but the future will show a different picture. And as you can see, 
also from, especially for our friends in, in Singapore, we also have higher building. I wouldn't even call them high risers, but at the end you can say we have higher buildings, but we are embedded in a, in a very interesting nature. As you can see the Alps in the back and you can see landscape, you can see hills and not everything is constructed and not everything is built. So this connection between the city and landscape is important as well as of course in Singapore. We started nearly 10 years ago in Singapore with single uh, houses in the sense of housing. We um, <clears throat> looked at the development of HDB in Singapore as a team coming from Zurich, the single building was, I would say, in the, in the center of the, of the evaluation. We extended together with Thomas when we went into the phase two, Future Cities Lab two, where Thomas Schrepfer uh, joined as the principal investigator at the time. We extended the typologies. It was not only housing, but office space, hospitals, public buildings, and so on, came into into this uh, under this looking glass and we tried to understand the potential of the single building within a district within a city and this all after years gave us the energy to think about it that we should increase the scale we should not just look at the single building but we should extend our, our looking glass, our focus to the district and try to understand how districts in the future evolve and especially with according to the governance, what does it mean to work together with people, including the governments and to try to develop new strategies for an urban development. Contemporary urban planning, and design practice is increasingly exploring this development of sustainable integrated districts, as we call them now, as a model for high density and high livability future cities. This for us is one of our main topics, one of our main aspects. And with this presentation, we want to show you how we approach this and how we bridge knowledge from Zurich to Singapore, from Singapore to Zurich, how we collaborate, and what are the methods used. Thomas, are you there? <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you, uh, Sasha. And uh, good afternoon or good morning from my side also. And thanks, Matthew, for the very kind introduction. Uh, I think, Sasha, you, you summarized uh, very nicely what the goal is of this uh, new research module that we do together. I want to just add from the Singapore side that uh, the development of sustainable integrated districts that you already mentioned as a model for high density, high livability future cities is a very important one in our context. Generally, SIDs aim to fully realize the potential of urban innovations and system solutions by developing and integrating them at the district scale. Density and sustainability in SIDs are often seen as mutually dependent and synergistic. In addition, such developments often serve as a testbed for examining the place-based approach to governance arrangements. So here on this slide, you see uh, essentially a summary of the things that, that we are interested uh, in, in the context of our module. Can I have the next slide, please? Sasha, the left is for you. Yeah, sure. Because what you can see here is that we, we started to get in touch with all modules involved into Future Cities Lab Global. And I think many of you have been involved into this workshop month ago where we tried to see affiliations, maybe similar interests among each other. And this, of course, creates and still will in the future create even more liaisons between the single modules. And this is what we want to explore. Of course, I'm talking now maybe more as the director of the hub and saying that this, of course, for us is highly important to create 
these connections and not to work only in our own silo, in our own module, but to get connected to other modules. And this is what the slide shows at the left that we have detected during this workshop, which was highly interesting and highly important then for the future steps of Future Cities Lab Global and for the single modules. And we have detected these affiliations. And I think this will create a lot of energy for the future. And I think now it's you, Thomas. That's right, Sasha. So uh, as I'm sure many of you know, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs are 17 global goals that all UN member states have agreed to try to achieve by the year 2030. This is uh, what you see on the right of the slide is a sustainable development uh, goal mapping for the whole of FCL Global where program deliverables are shown in relation to the SDGs. Next slide, please. On this slide, you see a visualization of our research module, Dancing Green Cities, that was generated using the UN SDG widget. This tool helps to determine which SDGs relate to our specific research project. Based on this assessment, the six main SDGs our work addresses are shown on the right. Five of them actually relate directly to the larger FCL global SDG mapping that we showed on the previous slide. The additional one addresses the health and well being dimension of our research as an important uh, component. Next slide. As we mentioned in the introduction, our research will investigate and evaluate currently ongoing and planned examples of SIDs through case studies in Europe and Asia. On this slide, you see aerial photographs of the case studies uh, without two case studies that we have recently added in the context of Singapore. Next slide, please. So let me briefly go over the sites that we have identified in the Singapore context starting with the Pungol Digital District. Um, the Pungol Digital District is part of Singapore's Pungol planning zone. It covers an area of approximately 50 hectares and is planned to be completed in 2024. The district will not just house the key growth industry of the digital economy, such as cybersecurity and digital technology. It is also planned to be an inclusive and green destination for the surrounding community of the larger Pungol district. The second case study uh, we're gonna look at is Jurong Lake district. It is part of the Jurong East planning zone and covers an area of roughly 360 hectares. JLD will be the largest mixed use business district outside the city center and will include offices, housing, amenities and extensive green spaces. The part of JDL that is already built is Jurong Gateway. It covers an area of about 70 hectares on the eastern end of the district. So in a way it has components that are built and unbuilt. And last but not least, One North. Uh, this uh, development is part of the Singapore Queenstown planning zone and covers an area of roughly 200 hectares. The development houses Singapore key growth sectors such as biomedical sciences, info communications, technology and media, as well as startups and was planned to provide an integration of industry centric developments with residential communities. Next slide, please. So very quickly uh, here, you see an aerial photograph with the boundaries of one north on the left. On the right, you see the development in plan in its larger urban context. Next slide. Uh, here you see uh, the area of the Jurong Lake District. As I mentioned previously, JLD is largely unbuilt at this point, with the exception of Jurong Gateway on the eastern end of the site. On the right, you see a rendering by the winning team of urban planners, designers and architects that envision JLD as a high density mixed use transit oriented development. Next slide. And last but not least, the unbuilt case uh, on the aerial photograph on the left, you see the area of the future Pumbol digital district. The rendering on the right visualizes the future built environment of the district. So you see all of these in a way are testing grounds for Singapore for what 
the future city uh, at large might look like. So I give it back to you, Sasha. Thank you, Thomas. And of course, we have also our case here in Zurich. We're talking about one case, and this is the district Zürich Altstetten. As you can see with the red dots, you can see the political boundaries of the city of Zurich in this slide. You see the lake introducing and into the river Limmat, and you see that our district touches the river Limmat. And on the left, it touches a forest which is going uphill. So it's quite an interesting cross section which we can draw. So the area is, I would say, much larger than the areas Thomas is looking at. His areas are between 0 0.5 square kilometers up to 3.6. And here we have a much larger area, but of course the density, the density is, is of course much less than we, we have usually in Singapore. This is, this is interesting because of course we are talking about two, about two, different, two different cultures. And this, this case, Altstetten, is also a case which is in agreement that we look at it with the governance here in Zurich, with the city planners, which we are in a very dense and very active collaboration. Next slide, please. So you see now here a picture of Altstetten on the, on the right side. You see the hill I was talking on the back. The lake is on the left. And one can see there are nice, interesting new developments. And of course, also all the developments which are now being torn down. As you can see on the right, where the machine is just taking down the existing buildings and we see there are flows, it's now a road, it can be the river, it can be the railway, you can see on the right. So there are perpendicular flows of highways of the river and of streets and of green corridors going through this district. And of course, it starts where the river is, industrial elements, then office space elements, railways, and highways and then going less and less dense up the hill. So quite an interesting, I would say a very interesting case to look at because this case has a lot of potential to grow in the future and according to host more than 80,000 new inhabitants for the, next, um, for the next 15 years. This case, we think together with the authorities of the city of Zurich is worth to have, a, to have a look at. And of course, we can learn what our colleague in, in Singapore is doing. Next, uh, please, next slide. I think this is you, Thomas. You're muted, Thomas. Sorry, now I'm, I'm back. Um, uh, <laughs> so the main research questions for our module, and that applies, of course, to uh, Zurich as well as uh, Singapore, are uh, shown here on this slide. They are, how can the scaling up of urban innovations and system solutions lead to resource optimization and greater synergies at the integrated district as well as the larger city scale? Second, what are effective planning guidelines and design strategies for the development of new SIDs, the transformation of existing districts into SIDs, and ultimately the development of dense and green cities? And last, what implications do different governance arrangements provide on SIDs? To what extent are resource optimization and functional synergies affected by a specific socio-spatial context framed by the governance system. Back to you, Sasha. Thank you, Thomas. So next slide, please. So what you can see here is the idea of this research framework work we have been um, establishing once in Singapore and once in Zurich. It's basically, it's mirrored for both. And you can see also uh, the, different, the different cases. And we have a architecture and urban design team, a social performance team, environmental and performance team, economic performance team, and the end, the governance team. All working together, I will introduce all the co-PIs and collaborators 
in the next slide, but the idea is to co-work with this um, idea of work packages. The research approach is a three-step one. We start, this is where we are in now, we start mapping, that's the stage one. Stage two will be evaluating what we have mapped and understood. And stage three, I think very interesting, will be the testing phase. What you can see is also all the involved stakeholders and when they will be involved. And you see that in stage one, during the mapping stage, we involve the agencies, the planning authorities, they are still in. And of course, we have involved residents and citizens. So this is quite important to understand the transformation dynamics, the quality of uh, the urban life to understand the neighborhood profiles and maybe to foresee a kind of an evolution which could happen. Then going to stage two, you see up to stage three, the testing, the, the um, <clears throat> stakeholders which will be involved will be always more and more intense. And this is what this slide should show. So maybe we go to the next one. And you can see here, Thomas, maybe you start with the Singapore yeah, team. So, so I believe we have uh, really assembled a, a fantastic interdisciplinary team on the Singapore side, as well as the Zurich side. I will uh, briefly mention everyone on the Singapore side. So we have Christoph Hölscher, who's professor of cognitive science at ETH Zurich, and also director of future resilient systems at the Singapore ETH Center. We have Lynette Chea, who is an Associate Professor of Engineering Systems and Design at SUPD. Fu Yuming, Associate Professor of Real Estate at NUS. Samson Lim, Associate Professor of Humanities, Arts and Social Sciences at SUPD. Lim Kwan Wee, Assistant Professor of Information Systems, Technology and Design at SUPD. Sri Lalita Gopala Krishnan, who is currently completing her PhD at SUPD and will subsequently join us at uh, FCL Global. Benny Jin, a postdoc at SUDD, as well as the SUDD researchers Anjana Devi Shrikant and Shira Kablani. So you see, it's, it's a really uh, quite a mixed bag of, of expertise that we have here. I think the same is, is true for the Zurich side, but we feel the, the ambition that we have for this project, the larger project and the many things that we wanna uh, discover and, and do research on require such a multidisciplinary team. Over to you, Sasha. Thank you. As you can see also, Zurich has this interdisciplinary team with very similar disciplines, but not usually also the same one, I say similar. And of course, Christoph Hölscher, he was uh, introduced, he's on both, uh, both sides. We have Marie Glaser and Sibyl Welty from ETH Case, and they are very much involved into social sciences. We have Fred Persin and Seppe de Blus, which are excellent urbanists and uh, are involved into this urban evolution. And of course, we have David Kaufmann and Anna Perich, which uh, will be involved into questions of uh, economy. And uh, of course, also more questions how also a city develops in, in, different, in different scales. We have Nicolo Guariento in our team as a co-investigator and he will bridge our knowledge with the energy questions and sustainability questions. And of course, we have our director of the whole group, which here in Zurich is Michel, which you have been knowing, I think, since a while. Yeah, you see a very interesting, crisp and very diverse team, either in Zurich and also in Singapore. And this uh, makes it interesting to see how this collaboration in the future will, will work. Next slide, please. In terms of collaborators on the, on the Singapore side, uh, we will work with the Ministry of National Development, the Center for Livable Cities there, definitely the Urban Redevelopment Authority, uh, the Housing and Development Board is to be confirmed, but I'm pretty confident they, they will work with us as well as National Parks and JTC Corporation. This list is, is not finished. I mean, as this project will go on for the next three, four years, uh, uh, I'm sure the list will get longer and we will include many, many uh, industry partners as well. Sasha? 
Yeah, of course, the, the, the list here, this is just the beginning in Zurich. As I mentioned, we are um, highly intensively working with the city of Zurich, with the authorities for planning, and of course, with the Swiss Office for Spatial Development, which is uh, integrated here into this, uh, into this module. And of course, we have involved different authorities of the cantons in the country, Italian speaking, French speaking, and of course the German speaking part. So this list is uh, maybe just a beginning and will get longer and longer. Next slide, please. Yeah, if we look at where we, where we are, I think it's now up to you, Thomas, to go on with One North, your case. Uh, yes, I just wanna say now we are, we're gonna start to show you some of the, the details of our research uh, going through the, the various work packages. So we're starting with work package one, architecture and urban design performance. So this work package investigates the role of architecture and urban design in SIDs and their potential to perform as integral parts of larger urban solutions and systems such as blue and green networks. The work package uh, analyzes, compares, and evaluates spatial strategies at multiple scales. Next slide, please. On uh, this and the following couple of slides, we are sharing with you some of our initial analysis of the uh, case study district. So in the Singapore case, uh, we will focus on the one north here on this first slide, you see uh, various aspects of uh, this district on the left, green and blue network within a five kilometer radius. Uh, in the middle, land use within a five kilometer radius and on the right, ground coverage within a 2.5 kilometer radius. Next slide, please. Here you uh, see a rendering based on the digital model of One North that we already built that includes views in the top row along the main green corridor that runs through the center of the development. Next slide, please. What you see here is a, is a spatial network analysis. So the objective of this analysis was to map the publicly accessible spaces and buildings as nodes in the spatial network of One North. As a background in complexity science, which is what we fall back on uh, for this part of the research, the local centrality of nodes in a system can be assessed through network centrality measure algorithms. A preliminary comparison of the various measures of all the public and common spaces within the One North planning subzone allowed us to understand the significance of spaces regarding their function and location and identify smaller but highly relevant area of study or so-called subsites. What you see here are visualizations of this analysis. On the left, the so-called weighted closeness centrality and on the right, weighted between the centrality. Next slide, please. We also conducted a spatial design network analysis or SDNA. Uh, this is a GIS supported plugin that can perform spatial network analysis of integrated urban environments especially street path and urban network analysis using 3D network link models uh, to be validated against real data. Here are two examples of visualizations of our spatial design network analysis of One North. On the left, you see an accessibility and flow measure analysis, and on the right, a closeness measure analysis of the pedestrian network. Next slide, please. So we use these various tools uh, and, and analyses uh, to define smaller subsites within the larger development of uh, One North. Our plan is to subsequently study these subsites in detail by collecting data on site with the help of sensors and mobile apps and some other tools to understand in this case, people movement and actual space use. The subsites that we have identified uh, are listed here. There are Biopolis, Fusionopolis, and Mediopolis. For those who are familiar with the Singapore context, I think you, you know all these sites uh, quite well. Next slide, please. So here you see uh, renderings, again, produced from the, the digital model that we built as a first step. Remember what Sasha showed, mapping is essentially the first step uh, of our work. Uh, again, on the left, Biopolis, followed by Fusionopolis, and on the right, Mediopolis. Next slide, please. 
We have captured the architecture of One North in quite some detail by building models of each building that is of interest to us. We are particularly interested in the provision of public and common spaces on multiple levels that many of these buildings achieve. And with that, I hand it back to Sasha. Thank you, Thomas. And we go to the next slide. So as well as in Singapore, we do, of course, same, same analysis here in, uh, here in Zurich. And what you see is this cross section through the um, <clears throat> district of, uh, of Altstetten, which, uh, which interests us. And interestingly, we started with a, with a promenade. So the whole team came together and we started to walk the district. It's a built district. The district has a lot of potential uh, in the future to be densified. But the question is, how do we can, of course, increase the quality of livability? And we try to understand what, what, is, what is the existing. And you see these uh, pictures which show it's a very architectural method. It's the observation. Architects observe. And this is so interesting because, of course, we work together with the pure scientists, we are working together with engineers, and we are designers, and at the end we are also involved with specialists in governance. And I, I say these four pillars are, let's say, the, 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 the construction of this of this, uh, of this research. And this is how we want to work, and everyone of the team within the team comes up with his methodology and then this will be woven together to a whole concept of research and here of course we started with this uh, promenade and this understanding and this was i think also interesting for our partners within the team to understand this district next slide please we use and and uh, yeah, thank you. And of course, we have the packages. I don't want to be too long here. And we start to understand the social performance and this uh, community formation and what kind of impact does this community formation have on the city itself. You see who is working on that. And of course, we are also heading on spatial networks and human flows, as Thomas has been showing before. Next slide, please. And yeah, you, what you can see at the end is what does this social performance package bring is you observe, you try to understand, and you interview, and you are within, within the districts. These methods include not only qualitative, as I explained, but of course, also a kind of quantitative analysis, as Thomas has been showing before. Next slide, please. As you can see here, we come to a kind of a closer data. Interesting is that all this data is open source since this year. This is fantastic in Switzerland. So we have all this open data available to understand the neighborhood analysis, to understand residential zones, to understand the density of employment, which is quite important, and of course, also of the population. And we can overlay these facts and try to understand what kind of impact this could then deliver for the future. Next one. And of course, we try to understand human flows, how people move, what they do with these kind of heat maps and uh, also spatial network analysis to have a deeper understanding what, what is going on in this district. And I think Interestingly, on the right side, density without the planning area is that it's not only a political boundary on Altstetten because people flow is just wider and much more extended, right? This is one north. I took yours, Thomas, I know, but this oh, basically no what is Zurich, what is the Zurich understanding is basically the same understanding. And here it's where the two modules really the two teams touch each other. Thomas. Sasha, if, if I may add here, uh, can we go back uh, to the last slide, please? Yeah. So I want to go in a little more depth here uh, with this, in a way, sub 
work package uh, to social performance. Uh, this one is uh, led by Lina Chair and uh, Lim Kwan Wee on, uh, on our side. Uh, being able to, to characterize urban vibrancy is for uh, you know, the two researchers that lead this, this uh, work package uh, is key to developing attractive urban districts. So urban vibrancy in this case concerns the intensity of human activities within cities, reflecting the success of a neighborhood or district in promoting social interactions and socioeconomic activities. The research team in this uh, sub work package investigates the mashing of available urban data sets to characterize and monitor urban vibrancy in the selected uh, case studies. And here you see some early visualizations of, uh, of the team. Uh, so the work package identifies types of human activity and intensity of activity through the use of data such as social media, think of Twitter, Flickr, and so on public transport, food delivery, uh, food panda, deliveroo in the context of Singapore and del uh, telco uh, data such as data spark. In uh, terms of analysis, the work package uses a regression based approach for understanding the relationship between the built environment and human activities, as well as agent based modeling for generating high spatial resolutions and dynamic urban vibrancy patterns. So again, these are some early visualizations uh, from, from that work package. But I think this is a, a very exciting approach that they take. And of course, we look forward to seeing more of this kind of analysis on both the Zurich as well as the Singapore side. Back to you, Sasha. Yeah, maybe I, I even would like to add because this question of the boundaries of the district, this is what is so difficult to capture because people move. And of course, the political boundary is not the boundary where you just can stop your view, but you have to go further. And I think these methods, which you just explained, Thomas, I think these methods make it possible to just give a broader understanding on how people act, move, and this urban vibrancy. So I think this is, for, for my opinion, is really a new tool, is a new way to understand on a, let's say, more quantitative way comparing to the qualitative way of, of observation. And if we overlay these methods, then I think we get to a really interesting, really interesting result. Next slide, please. Yeah, so environmental performance is, of course, a highly important um, <clears throat> package, which we have Within, within our team. What you can see here are two pictures. So two really interesting um, slides which show the diversity anyway of, you see a blue corridor and you see a green corridor, which of course are embedded in this very urban densified, uh, densified area. We will have Arno Schlüter with his module he will be integrated this into this uh, environmental performance. So we have an agreement with Arno and we started a collaboration. Also the city of Zurich enjoyed this and also Arno and our team, we are embedded into, into this uh, framework. And I still don't know how, how we then let's say transfer to Singapore, Thomas, how we do this. This is still an open question, but anyway, it, the start is given. Maybe the next slide. This is a question of economic, of economy. Of, so what you can see here is a city map. It's all open data of Zurich and we choose a plot. This is a, a, a very interesting instrument we have been developing. It's now a turn to be translated into English. So we can look at every single plot. We look at the density of the plot. We even can change the density as you can see. So it's, a, it's an interesting tool, which of course can be translated to Singapore later on. We look at the different factors which <clears throat> affect a building, a building plot. And of course the building 
itself. So it's the rooftop or it's the underground, as you can see here. So we can play around. But the idea is to understand the potential at the end, which the single plot has according once to the building law and even losing the, build, the building law and creating new strategies. We can start to think about objects which have been built. As you can see, these are the reference objects. We can choose a reference object because at the end, we want to know the cost of the single building. And with choosing a reference object, we have data which show us how high the price per cubic meter or per square meter could be. We could see also the efficiency of the single building, how efficient it is. We can even change, as you can see now, the ratio. Is it the building with small, in this case, apartments, bigger ones? We can show the performance of parking areas, which for Zurich is extremely important because public transport at the end is a big topic here. And of course, at the end, we say the cost, the building costs according to the Swiss building elements. And at the end, we want to know the economic performance of the building. And with this tool, we can see at the end the price of the building itself and of course we can see a kind of a performance model so how good does this building perform this is just the beginning what we have developed with this tool it's just the beginning and it's not a tool for speculative uh, future developments of cities but it will be embedded in other tools here you can see uh, playing around a little bit in this movie, the whole finance situation of this um, economic performance. I don't want to go too much into, into this, but you see, we start to develop tools. And with these tools, at the end, we try also for the authorities to give a better understanding, once on visualization, but at the end also how the economic performance at the end would be. And this is what the authorities need to show is a, a basic and an entity of a, of a view of a performance and of a development of a one's plot, the site or a district. And now we are developing this tool more to a tool which could be used also for districts, so from the single building up to, let's say, a much wider and broader view. This is done with the NetCap tool, which you maybe know, <clears throat> which was developed by Adrienne Great Vegame, and we are now in collaboration to merge these two tools. So we have the NetCap functions, which are interesting functions and overlaid or underlaid with this to here. Next slide, please. Yeah, maybe I, I take the, the left side here, uh, Sasha. So this work package is the last work package we are introducing to you today is uh, governance. On the Singapore side, the, the work package is led by uh, our colleague Fu Yuming. Uh, the work package will contribute to the study of integrated district development in two respects. One, it will evaluate placemaking performance using crowd sensing data, and two, identify effective approaches to placemaking governance. Uh, in terms of uh, tools, it will make use of mobile phone data to develop uh, spatial temporal metrics of face-to-face -face contacts between workers from different office buildings in the district to capture the extent to which serendipitous interactions might happen in the district. So, you know, I think it's it's good to, to also give you a taste of how we're gonna go uh, about the research. So that would be uh, for, the, for the Singapore side. I believe it's slightly different the approach on the Zurich side, but again, we are we're at the very beginning of this, uh, joint journey. Sasha? Yeah, it's really a joint journey. And of course, David Kaufman could explain this uh, maybe more precise. This will be when we will come together for uh, the next time. But at the end, we have two different methods. 
and uh, of course Kaufmann's uh, David's team has been starting now and I know it's in collaboration and also communication with Fu Yuming that's excellent and at the end the question is what are the implications of government's arrangements for the success of this sustainable integrated districts in different places and of course David is now has been starting and is integrated and of course the city of Zurich is highly interested in these outcomes and this institutional organizational maybe also individual behavior is part of it of this understanding but it's a different let's say methodology than you are using in, in Singapore but I think one can learn from each other and this for my opinion is just the interesting part of this collaboration of the two hubs. Next one. Thomas? Yeah, so in summary, uh, our research will capture important aspects of the architectural, urban design, social, environmental, and economic systems performance of SIBs systematically, and as a whole contribute to our knowledge about how SIBs can improve existing urban environments and be an effective model for future high density, high livability cities. Next slide, please. So I start with the, the left column here, are some of the outcomes that, that we are hoping for at this point. Uh, we want to contribute knowledge about how SIDs can improve existing urban environments and be an effective model for future high density, high livability cities. We want to, again, capture important aspects of SIDs. We want to capture user attitudes, psychological and emotional well-being, as well as what activity patterns are related to different types of SIDs. We want to help formulate, ultimately, strategies in that the integration of urban districts are uh, integral to planning and design of the future. We want to add further understanding on the interplay between architecture and urban form and the related social dynamics, space use and appropriation. We want to create knowledge about how the presence and layout of SIDs impacts not only users' appreciation and well-being, but also how it influences larger flows in the city and thus ultimately activity patterns and valuation. And finally, we want to create a new integral social urban planning and design theory. And ultimately, all of this will hopefully lead to toolkits for policymakers, urban planners, and designers, as well as architects that further the development of SIDs globally. Uh, Sasha, do you want to add to this? I believe this is our final yeah. slide. Yeah, I mean, this is this is our credo and our hope, of course. This is what we are looking at to really at the end deliver deliver these outcomes but interesting is that the authorities either in singapore and in zurich are fully involved and of course this is this is the way we work and especially for me is a kind of a new experience to work together with the with the authorities so close on a, on a research on a research of this of this uh, size, so in that sense, I think we are at the end. If I'm not wrong, Thomas. Yes. Next and, slide, please. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep, that's, the, that's the final that's slide. The last one. Okay. So, thank you very much. Here we are. Yeah. Thank you very much. So I think we went a bit over time, but I believe we have ten minutes or so left for discussion. And of course, we would be happy to answer any question you might have. Uh, by email, so you will find uh, either one of us uh, online. Back to you, Matthew. Brilliant. Thank you to you both for this very clear, even-handed, very deliberately interactive presentation. We see here ample evidence of your close collaboration, and we will open the floor to questions now. Those of you who have them, please post them to the chat. I have a couple of questions myself, but I see a question posted to the chat already by Tanvi Maheshwari, my counterpart as FCL Associate Director in Singapore. Tanvi, I'll just go ahead and read your question, or do you want to go ahead and do it yourself? I see you just unmuted. Please do. Yeah, um, thanks for the presentation, uh, Sasha and Thomas. I, I, it was very 
interesting and to see all the actors involved. It's very, uh, I'm curious to see how it all comes together. Uh, specifically those diagrams of network analysis were interesting for me because um, it just shows you kind of in a more quantitative way, the heart of the district, which we talk about. So Sasha takes a walk down the promenade to observe it and you do this network analysis. Uh, but how would you deal with the sites that are undeveloped, especially in Singapore, we have these very large sites that are completely uh, built at one go or uh, with yeah. not too much to uh, uh, latch on to in terms of history or place uh, making qualities? Yeah, so uh, I mean, we have three sites that we're interested in, as I said at the beginning of the presentation, uh, one and a half of them are, are built, right? So one north, we can go there, we, we did the, the, the network analysis, we identified subsites. So again, next step is to actually go into the site and collect data on site. Huh? Uh, so that one, that one is, is no problem. Uh, the Jurong Lake District uh, is a part of it, uh, if you remember uh, from the presentation, is built, the Jurong Gateway. And this area has been pointed out to us by several of the, the local agencies here, particularly the Urban Redevelopment Authority, as a very interesting new development. Um, it's about 70 uh, hectares. And it's interesting for us because of the density aspects and the layering of public and common spaces. Uh, so we're very interested in uh, essentially the vertical city in the context of the density and the title of, uh, of our project. So while we cannot study, or we can study to some extent the plans for the future district, there is a part of the district that we can already go into and, and take measurements and do all the things that, that we want to do. The last one, uh, we just added very recently. I mean, of course, you have been in Singapore long enough. You know, Pungol is, is a kind of a model district uh, at, the, at the larger scale, but particularly the digital, uh, the Pungol digital district, of course, there's a lot of hype around this one. Uh, there are very good architects involved in this one. It's car light. So it, it wants to try a lot of things. So in a way, our analysis of this one would be based on what the current plans are for the district. And of course, what we find in the other districts that we study, what works and what doesn't work. And who knows, maybe someone listens and you know we can even have a small impact on, on the future development uh, there. So it's a, it's a very conscious decision to choose three and only one and a half of them are, are built. I mean, the same would, would essentially also apply to the Jurong Lake District. Thank you. Super, any other questions, please do post them. Uh, meanwhile, I do have a question. Um, at FCL, we're often talking about settlement systems as connecting cities with one another and with their regions, and sometimes describe these as involving two distinct but related layers, the underlying ecological armature of the region, nature, and the region's infrastructural armature, kind of cultural infrastructure. So in light of this, and having listened to uh, your presentation with interest, especially what you just said, Thomas, about this uh, re districts that are still in development, it's clear that you address the blue and green corridors that link rural and urban settlements and that you put a lot of emphasis on engagement with stakeholders. I'm thinking now of the distinction between soft mobility, which generally involves ecological corridors and active mobility, which uh, generally focuses on public health. Of course, these are closely related. Uh, for example, when we were working in Addis Ababa, we had the idea to provide shaded corridors for runners and activity that's really popular in that city. But as it happens, when we spoke to these people who were really actively running, they said that they were less concerned about shade, saying it's not so hot. They're more concerned about having spatial continuity in their running circuits. Yeah. Yeah. So to formulate these reflections as a question, uh, Sasha, picking up on your engagement with producing bicycles, can you speak to these questions of microclimate and spatial connectivity in your research? How do you see inclusive engagement with stakeholders? Um, I suppose, this is explicitly addressed in the work package, Spatial Networks and Human Flows. Uh, interesting question. And I, I think uh, uh, I cannot give an answer, of course, because then, the <laughs> then we would have done the research. But this is part of the research, what you're saying. But anyway, it's, it's the, the, the question starts with choosing the case. So which case do you take and which is, the let's say, the pilot for future 
for future districts and for future developments. And therefore, Altstetten is, I think, this quest, this, um, this um, topic of uh, showing the, the cross section, right, from the, from the woods, from the hill, from the forest, going down to Andens element, crossing all these different corridors, which I, I showed during the presentation. So cutting through in, a, in, an, orthogonal, in an orthogonal way. And, and this is exactly what we, that's the reason why we chose Altstetten, because it's, it's really the case where all these questions, which you have been coming up now, which just combines, combines these questions. And if I would know the answer, then, <laughs> then I would be finished. But this is, exactly, this is exactly what we are looking at to get this understanding how these flows function. And of course, when I talk to the, uh, it's called uh, the, the, the Green Department of Zurich, Grünstadt Zürich, you call it here. And this department, the first question is what they say, how can I bring shadow to the, to the, to the city? How can I cool the city? How can I cool the city with greenery? And of course, the answer is not just in plant, planting, in planting trees, because then you should know where you plant the trees and what function these trees should have. But then you should even know where people where people move. So the mobility patterns you you should know, and with this you should know where they work, and you should know where is a development for for new work spaces and housing spaces. And this is this is what makes this this um, research so interesting is that everything everything comes together, and one camera cannot catch it. It's a multi layer of cameras which catches different uh, factors which we think, which are packed in our working packages, which define a development of a city. But at the end, you have to test it. And maybe we haven't been clear too much because at the end, we test it with students, we test it with design classes, we bring it back to the school, we bring it back to the young people, and then we really try to develop on the paper, on the screen, new, new um, patterns, new forms, new shapes of city developments, including these questions. I hope I was clear. <laughs> I think that is clear, yes. Maybe just by way of a, a, a lighthearted, in some sense, entry point for a follow-up question to Thomas. Um, I know here in Zurich, we have uh, pretty regularly a uh, disruption of traffic and uh, regular automobile uh, circulation by group of bicyclists who are really deliberately attempting to emphasize the need for these alternative modes to be accommodated. Is there such a thing in, um, in Singapore that you've seen? And especially in light of the districts that are still developing, you know, when, when these corridors are established, they're usually uh, supported by, um, for example, organizations advocating for such things, and there's a financial benefit often found in creating such quarters as well. Maybe you could speak briefly to this by way of ending our yep. session. Sure. I mean, this is this is probably you know uh, the topic for for another discussion uh, or a, a talk, right? Because this is a a very hotly debated uh, issue in in Singapore. Uh, cycling, you know, many people have picked up cycling, so it's, it became more popular also through COVID-19, right? People felt they want to be more active and so on, but it's, you know, there are many conflicts around cycling in, in Singapore. At the same time, uh, the government tries to, to push through building networks such as the Park Connector Network and, and so on, uh, an infrastructure that, that actually provides uh, safe cycling routes throughout the, the city. Uh, it's certainly um, considered uh, in some of the cases that, that we look at, for example, uh, Pungol, right? Pungol Digital District, uh, which I already mentioned is, is meant to be car light and pedestrian friendly. And I don't know if you have seen the, the renderings that were produced for the Jurong uh, Lake District Certainly there, the, the street section also looks quite different from the typical street section of, uh, 
of Singapore. So I think moving forward with these new districts, there's, there's certainly an opportunity to bring this uh, much more to the foreground. Um, regarding the question, do cyclists here block uh, the road? Uh, yes, but at a much smaller scale. And uh, please remember this is uh, Singapore, so you can be in trouble uh, very quickly uh, for this. And it's also very dangerous because the, the standard speed here is not 50 uh, kilometers per hour, but 70 on, on many of the roads. So you, you risk your life when you do some of these things, but it is, it is uh, an, an, an ongoing discourse. And I think it's moving in the right direction. And I think the government is taking the right steps in terms of the, the built environment. And that's great to hear. Well, it would be wonderful to have a dedicated uh, event about this theme at some moment as a bicyclist myself. It's often very unclear in Zurich also how to navigate. So I've been ticketed several times for riding on the street or on the sidewalk when it's supposed to be the other way around. So we're making progress. Well, thank you both. Uh, by way of closing, I would just say thank you again to Sasha. Thank you to Thomas. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you. Thank you very much. And you know, Matthew, I started as a bicycle producer, so you know where my heart beats, right? So okay. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, super stimulating presentation. We've had more participants today than previously, so I recognize many of the participants from previous events, but we're really happy you could join us and hope you'll join us again. Looking forward to seeing you in the forthcoming events. And I should also make the point of thanking our collaborators coordinating the event, Tanvi Maheshwari, my counterpart as Associate Director of FCL in Singapore. Uh, who we heard from with an earlier question, and Geraldine Ea, Communications Director at SEC, who were together responsible for disseminating information about the event. And special thanks also to Michael Yost and Jens Fischer, our technology coordinators in Singapore and Zurich, respectively, and our administrative teams, Nirali and Xiaobun in Singapore, and Michelle in Zurich, who together with Sri prepared the presentation today. So thanks to you all. We'll hope to see you again at the next event which will be advertised soon. Thank Good you. End. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.